this morning. So if you missed the other ones, maybe check them out. We've had some good conversations. They've been pretty short. So anyway, as we were driving here um, to Wichita, this one way that we went, <laughs> there's this uh, house that has like a sculpture of Bigfoot in the front. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why um it makes me wonder how much it cost or like how long it took to to make but it got me thinking about bigfoot everybody knows you know the the uh <clears throat> story about oh gosh who was it was it john taylor was it wilford woodruff i'm not sure who people believe that he came in contact with Bigfoot or he uh, essentially came in contact with Kane, I believe, and he looked like Bigfoot. And so there's kind of like this um, myth or like legend among some in the church that Bigfoot really is actually Kane. And uh, I've never researched it really, so I can't really comment on that. Maybe if you guys know, you can put it in the chat or in the comments below but you know I wouldn't be surprised if something like that was going on uh, there's just like so much that we don't really understand and so much that hasn't been revealed um, for example you look at the animal kingdom and it's pretty clear that we're related right we're alive, they're alive, <clears throat> we have similarities to them, uh, many of them have, well, most of them, if not the vast majority of them, have heads. You know, if you think about mammals, mammals have a head, they have, they usually have four, well, the, the, you know, like two arms and two legs. Um, some animals are closer to us, like, resemble us more than others. Michelle Hardy, I finally caught you live. Oh, good. Well, hopefully, hopefully this one is your cup of tea. We're talking about aliens and Bigfoot in this one. So, you know, animals in us, we seem to be related in some kind of way. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, after this live or once more is revealed, we find out that, you know these animals and plants they they probably also have intelligence maybe even intelligence on the same level as humans and when i say intelligence i'm referring to the unique church doctrine that we're made up of a physical body a spiritual body and then a third element called an intelligence which we don't really know anything about it very much other than it's always existed it wasn't created and so if you look at the entire spectrum in the entire field of intelligences that exist throughout eternity, I suppose, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if basically what we're witnessing here is you have uh, those intelligences brought here to Earth and God gave them all bodies. And some intelligences are closer to God in on a godlike level in those that's what you would call human beings you know humans are uh the closest to god and so you could probably classify all the different categories of intelligences according to i'm not sure what uh maybe their uh sophistication their complexity i i don't know but that's kind of like the way things work in my mind that's why there's kind of like this chain of life there's a animal family tree tree of life so to speak and it just so happens that humans and human intelligences are at the top of that and are because of their ability i guess they're uh, in charge of the rest of life they're supposed to be caretakers um like i've said before i really feel like our heavenly father essentially the best way to describe him and what he's doing is that he's a homesteader he has land he has property he has he has a family he has a wife he has children and he has animals and he has uh crops you know and he takes care of all those things all all those things that are within his care um 
trying to bring about the most happiness and yield the best results out of everything within his domain or her domain, you know. So, um, I think that's what it comes down to, that animals are essentially, they are also an intelli intelligence on the same level as far as like from the same place, but they're uh, inferior or um, not on the same level as those of us that became human. I know that sounds like really crazy, but I think that explains it, you know, why there are animals. And so moving on, as we think about uh, Bigfoot, <laughs> Um, if, if there are, if there is such a thing as Bigfoot and a species of Bigfoot, are they a different species? Are they human? Uh, I don't know. You know, what, one thing that's happening in this life is that <coughs> we're being further divided, you know? So if, the, if there was some kind of division before this earth, we, we know that there was, there, we know that there was a division between Satan and his followers and those of us that continued on, right? So like a division process already began before this life and could it be going even further back? Like I said, there was a division between, okay, these intelligences, they are bears. These intelligences, they are human because they're more complex. Um, so it's like, it's like we're going through this like the way I see it, like this kind of like sorting process where things get more and more and more and more defined, you know, in those that become exalted, they finally get sorted out from the rest and then take on that mantle of responsibility that God the Father has and they become exalted. So there was within the human family, there was a division before this life even began. And while we're here, there's further divisions in sorting out those that are going to go <coughs> excuse me those that are going to go to outer darkness and join satan those that are going to go telestial those that are going to go terrestrial and those that are going to go celestial and even within the celestial kingdom there's further division there's even more sorting that goes on and uh you have one of the three degrees within the celestial kingdom itself uh that you can inherit so as we're thinking about Bigfoot, um, I don't know that it's necessarily true. Uh, I've never seen one myself, but I do tend to think uh, that they, they or he or it probably does exist just based on my own. You know, I followed it my whole life. My dad was always into that kind of stuff. And um, I, it's like piqued my interest from time to time. And uh, yeah, I think that there is probably a Bigfoot. What's not clear is if it's human, if it has to do with Cain and his lineage. And uh, I'd be interested to hear your opinions about if you, in the first place, if you think that Bigfoot is real. And if so, do you think that it has to do with um, the gospel? Do you think it's just a separate species and it's nothing more than that? That Bigfoot, are they just another type of primate and nothing more? Or do you think that there's some kind of like, they are some kind of other category of fallen human? <clears throat> Which I think there's a good possibility of that. Okay, John Oregon. Didn't Joseph Smith say, if you knew what I knew, you would seek my blood? For these things are very, <coughs> very interesting, but I put, okay, but I put it in the category of so many things that I do not know. Mysteries of God. John Oregon, I stay open to many possibilities. Yeah, you know, I think that's the best way to do it. Like, there's so much that we don't know. And I don't know about you, but in my life, as much as I think about things and try and figure the future out, uh, it's pretty apparent at this point that I'm not very good at predicting the future. <laughs> and I don't think any of us are. As human beings, we're not good. We can kind of do it sometimes, but... Even the best of us, even scientists and whatever, are bad at predicting the future. So, um, yeah, you have to. You have to stay open. Okay, Lonnie Cox. Hi, Jared. I also live in Kansas. Oh, all right. Awesome. I sent you an email about a week ago at the one listed on this YouTube channel. Uh, I'll try and get to it 
no promises. I have 1,300 emails that I have not been able to respond to. I'll, I'll see if I can get to it, though. Uh, Joe Signs, I think aliens are the city of Enoch. They were blessed with technology and were literally able to remove themselves from Earth, only to return when they're told to. Yes, I think that's that's a very good... There's a very good chance of that. A very, very good chance. Uh, Jocelyn Peace, I think, came. Joe Signs, Bigfoot is fallen human. Joe Signs, uh, the pure natural man. Ooh, yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. That that would make sense if you took <coughs> all sort of of spirituality out of a human being. Not that God did that, but if you took, um, and this is going to sound bad. I'm not trying to like, you know, all, all, we're all children of God, even even Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> If it, <laughs> we just passed the Bigfoot statue. Today. Yeah, that's why I'm talking about oh, it. I yeah. was telling them about the Bigfoot oh. statue. Um, if it turns out that that Bigfoots are are part of the human family, even they are that even they are children of God. <laughs> but it, it may just be that um, they are like <laughs> the, the low. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, they're like the, the lowest of the low. <laughs> <coughs> um, and we don't we don't really fully understand how things work. That could be completely not right. <laughs> but we know that in the millennium, uh, it, it's said that all things are going to be revealed. And I would assume that that would probably include the mystery of <laughs> of Bigfoot if if Bigfoot is part of the human family in what they've been doing, how they've been living their existence on this earth uh, this entire time, and uh, what their what their potential is, what their role is, uh, and just what how God has dealt with them uh, throughout the ages. So, <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, pure tribes. natural man. What? They're the lost tribes living in caves. The lost tribes living in caves. I, I don't think so. Uh, John Oregon, if Bigfoot is real, I'm very happy that they stay hidden and do not mess with us. I enjoy camping, and it would ruin camping <laughs> if it were common for Bigfoots to mess with us. You know, if some of the stories are true, and I, I do doubt a lot of the stories out there, but I think that some of them probably are true. Just just like with near death experiences. Um, there are some pretty terrifying accounts of Bigfoot uh, messing with campers and uh, even like sometimes being a little bit violent as far as like throwing rocks or sticks and logs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it is a good thing that they're so reclusive because obviously they're, they're bigger. Uh, all descriptions say that they're bigger than humans on average and therefore they're probably a lot stronger so it's good that they have that um fear i guess of humanity so uh moving on to aliens uh, i'd also like to know if um if you think that we are being visited and if so are you of the opinion okay first of all first question do you think we're being visited or you don't think we're being visited by some other uh, by others not of this world and that could include that could include the city of Enoch <clears throat> and if you do if you do think that we're being visited um, do you think that that is spiritual in nature meaning you know it's the ten lost tribes meaning it's the city of Enoch uh, meaning possibly it's actually how angels get around possibly uh, we know in our church that there are, you know, there are heavenly devices. Uh, the Liahona being one. Uh, the Urim and Thummim seemingly another. Uh, the, the, the like platform, I can't remember how it's described, but when Christ came to the Kirtland Temple, he was standing on like a, some kind of gold workmanship. Uh, for what purpose, I don't know. But I'm not sure if it was just for decoration 
he could have just stood on the pulpit, but he he was standing on that work of that workmanship. Um, was it some kind of technology? I don't know. I know that these are weird ideas. Not everybody's into this, but there do seem to be heavenly devices. And um, I just wonder if uh, some of those things could be angels. I, whenever I heard that theory before, uh, before maybe just a few years ago, I was just like, no, it's not angels. That's stupid. But I don't know. Maybe it is for all anybody knows. Okay, John Oregon. I know aliens are visiting. My dad has seen their ships about 100 yards away. He does not talk about it much. He is never prone to exaggeration. <clears throat> Michelle Hardy. This is from a talk from Elder Eldon Tanner. Quote, the account in Luke tells us that a messenger from the Father crossed space to announce. And I assume that she's still typing, probably. Or maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah, I mean, they have, you know, um, angels, Christ, the Father, they travel in some kind of way. Um, and I don't know if that's like, a, you know, the classic, like, moving at the speed of thought. I don't know if that just applies to the Father and the Son. Um, maybe angels are kind of, they move in a different way. I, I just, I don't know. So... I'm kind of myself open to either <laughs> either possibility, but I think that Joseph Fielding Smith was probably onto something when he he thought that there probably wouldn't be contact from other worlds during this stage of mort mortality because if we were to come in contact with another of God's worlds <clears throat> and they're in mortality and they uh, confirmed that Jesus Christ had visited them, that Jesus Christ is the Savior and they have the same religion as us, then that would, for some people, that would remove uh, faith, right? So that's like one reason why, you know, in a possible answer to Fermi's paradox, which is, you know, with as vast as the universe is in the number of galaxies that are out there and how many... Uh, potentially habitable worlds in each galaxy there should be some kind of indication by now um, of their existence <clears throat> but there's not or at least not that officially we know about gosh my hair um so that, that might be why that might be why um gosh it, it's just it's so crazy so i just wanted to kind of get a feel put feelers out there for what everybody thought about uh bigfoot aliens do you think that it's spiritual do you think that it's not do you think that bigfoot is just a pure just an animal has nothing to do with the gospel plan they're not human or do you think that they are aliens do you think that they're <clears throat> from other worlds and the lord is permitting other civilizations to contact us or do you think it's not happening or do you think that it's one of these other groups like these translated groups like the city of enoch i wouldn't be surprised if it was the city of enoch because the lord taking away an entire group of people it's not like they just can't get taken away and then they just do nothing for the rest of their lives um if they were so spiritual that they obtained uh, a zion society one of heart one of mind they're they're they've obviously leveled up spiritually and <clears throat> they're probably worthy of further responsibilities and may for all i know maybe they've been in charge of kind of ensuring that this earth doesn't completely destroy itself that's like a common theme when you watch like the history channel or alien documentaries that uh it you know there's all these like different stories that aliens are concerned with uh us not destroying ourselves and interfering with um our nuclear sorry nuclear uh facilities and stuff like that um observing our um nuclear capabilities right there, there's like ufos that show up near nuclear sites <clears throat> so for all anybody knows you know maybe it is the city of enoch maybe they do all sorts of things uh, to help protect us from ourselves <laughs> and maybe they perform other functions that we're not aware of I don't know okay so Michelle is continuing so I'm gonna I'm gonna say hers again so 
This is from a talk from Elder Eldon Tanner. The account in Luke tells us that a messenger from the Father crossed space to announce, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. Out in space, suddenly there came a, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. God's purposes for having prophets upon the earth is to relay his messages for the benefit and blessing of mankind by whatever means of space communication he elects to use. Flash flow over my house three times, jelly bean shaped uh, when doing astronomy. Large silent ship thing moves fairly quick. That is uh, a little bit freaky. And then, of course, the other option uh, when we're talking about just um, UFOs in general, that are they... Are they uh, you know, a uh, secret, secret, see, uh, like a classified aircraft, essentially, military aircraft. Uh, so who, who the heck knows? Uh, John Oregon, why wouldn't God's children from not have an interest in visiting the planet? Savior died. Come see the worst planet in the family. <laughs> that That's an interesting thought, though. Maybe that's one reason. Maybe, who knows? What if, like, just Earth is off limits because so many people would want to come here and uh, we would just be literally invaded by space tourists? <laughs> <laughs> All of them going to Jerusalem. Maybe Salt Lake City. I don't know. Joe Signs, I think terrest uh, terrestrial travel is technology based. Celestial travel is dimensional based. Hence, people have higher kingdoms can visit lower kingdoms, but not the other way. Just a theory. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good thought. It's a very good thought. Hopefully, we'll get uh, answers to some of this stuff in the millennium <clears throat> as part of, you know, all things will be revealed. And if not then, then certainly once we reach the celestial stage of this earth. But it's all so cool. Um, it's all really cool. I would like to know what's been going on <coughs> with those three objects that were shot down over the northern U.S. and Canada. Um, as far as I know, there's still not very very much information about that, but it's it's just weird that 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 happened at this time when just like so much is going on you know what i mean uh, i don't know if it's related to what's about to happen on earth if like big things are happening this year don't know again all we can do is just wait and see but it is interesting that that happened uh whatever they were now my best guess is that they probably weren't extraterrestrial i, I would assume that since they happen in such such close proximity to the the chinese balloon well i feel like occam's razor would kind of dictate that it probably is related to the chinese but i don't know maybe not maybe not maybe it is aliens <clears throat> so uh by the way i again I, i've talked to uh rabbi gerfine we've talked about aliens and the jews have a belief that there are other worlds out there and uh, they actually have a number for it uh 18 000 other worlds and I, I i he didn't really explain where that idea came from i think it comes from the talmud i don't know how they reached that conclusion uh obviously that would kind of go against our idea that i mean we're both in, in agreement that there's other worlds uh with other of god's creations out there but in the, in the LDS view, it wouldn't be limited to just 18,000. Uh, in, unless in the Jewish view, 18,000 is like supposed to be some kind of symbolic number. So, let's see. Onslow Papeltine, <laughs> whose profile picture is a Bigfoot, <laughs> says, uh, I've always thought, Onslow, are you, are you a Bigfoot? Can you tell us more about yourself? I've always thought had the thought <coughs> had christ performed the atonement on another planet and we had the technology and knowledge to travel and visit that planet we would go visit and visit it in secret 
Yeah, well, just like here, I mean, you'd have people that would probably do it in unauthorized ways unless there was like something securing the planet to make sure that people don't go there that aren't supposed to go there. Uh, otherwise, you would have maybe not so great groups visiting the planet. So that's something to think about. Uh, John Oregon referring to the balloons. Let's see the worst planet. Oh, okay. Referring to the balloons. <coughs> so, I don't know. But there's there's a lot of like really weird stuff happening right now when it comes to UFOs. Like I've never seen in my entire life. Uh, like I've said before, other Christian groups, other like Christian second coming groups tend to think that the reason why they're talking about aliens so much right now is that there's going to be a rapture, all Christians are going to be gone, and then they're going to use the, in, in during that tribulation period, they're going to use the um, UFO uh, story to explain why all these people are gone, that they were, you know, abducted in mass. Um, I'm not so sure that I really agree with that, but you do have to wonder why there's so much interest right now. And I wonder if it could be that maybe the party is starting, you know, maybe, uh, those heavenly hosts, maybe they're, they're doing maneuvers. Maybe they're getting ready for the second coming. Maybe they're pre positioning for however it plays out. And so we're seeing more of them. I, I don't know. It's just, it's really weird. Family race. Many have supposed that the doctrine of translation was a doctrine whereby men were taken immediately into the presence of God and into an eternal fullness. But this is a mistaken idea. Their place of, of habitation is that of the terrestrial order in a place prepared for such characters. He held in reserve... Uh, okay. He held in reserve to be ministering angels unto many planets and who as yet have not entered into <laughs> so great a fullness of those who were resurrected from the dead teachings of the prophet joseph smith page 170 yeah and and like i said before a long time ago that's why when when brigham young is talking about life on the moon and life on the sun I don't think he was just going with the ideas of the day because that's what some people will say the more learned will be like no that was just you know a common thing to think in his time and I don't that that may be true but I don't think that that's what he was communicating I, I would not be surprised at all if them and other um, translated people are on the moon and you can't see them that there's like a lot more going on with the moon than what we can see with our natural uh, fallen telestial condition eyes i would not be surprised at all uh joe signs i've been feeling something strong about this conference probably for me personally but i've never had such an outpouring of the spirit preceding conference of course i hope it's global well just with my small little uh subscriber base here joe i i get the feeling that a lot of people are feeling that way uh it could be because I've helped, I've helped to hype it up. It's not just me, it's others too. But um, I feel like there's been a lot of special things that have taken place, both uh, on the world stage, but also at a personal level since this last conference. I truly, and are you okay? Oh, you're just yawning. Are, are no, you, this is fine. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I can't really talk about like the more personal things and you probably wouldn't really be that interested in it anyway, but um i just feel like a lot of things have been happening and I, I still need to go through all the rest of the the miracle emails that everyone has sent me it, it just feels like there's a lot green tree says i think morgan philpot is watching your videos he's saying some very similar things uh you do uh do you think the link that i posted in your oh wait sorry did you see the link that i posted in in your previous video it's his newest video it's not supposed to it's not posted publicly though. Uh, no, I have not seen that. <coughs> I'm still working on his other presentation. I just, 
you wouldn't believe it, but I really do not have that much time. Between, like, going and doing errands like this, where we're in Wichita, doing stuff with the homestead, um, doing family things. It's just, like, it's it's so hard to find any time to do additional things. <coughs> Usually my videos... I don't know, like, how you guys perceive my videos or how long it takes to put them together, because it's very impromptu. And it's not, like, all laid out and very, very organized, you know. I don't do the PowerPoint presentations or anything like that because it would just... That that would take forever. But just doing the videos like what I do, on average, it takes me, you know, an hour to an hour and a half, maybe on average, <coughs> to put everything together to do a video. Um, sometimes longer. And uh, it's just very, and then on top of that, I try and do like these other projects that I'm doing, like uh, keeping the Book of Mormon sharing tracker up to date and um, <clears throat> researching things for like future videos that I'm not like necessarily doing right now. But like, you know, there's like so many different things that I'm doing. It's really hard to um, really follow much else. Um, I think that he's great from what I've seen so far. He seems pretty good. I just, like I said, I just have that one kind of disagreement about the book of Revelation and uh, about <clears throat> what he said about the dragon and um, a third of the stars from heaven. But otherwise, he seems pretty good. Uh, Green Tree, I understand you're, you're getting busy. Uh, I still share these videos with you to add to your insights <laughs> if you have time, just in case. Okay, cool. Just as long as you, just as long as you understand. Um, I really wish there were more, <laughs> more hours in the day. It's just, gosh, it's just, it's just, it's a feast, essentially. There's just, like, so much out there to look at, and even once you kind of, like, go through most of it, you have to, like, go over it over and over and over again for some of the things to stick in your mind. But it's so cool, and I'm really, I'm really happy that YouTube has given me this opportunity. There's, like, a lot of people that, you know, rail against YouTube, but I don't, I, I'm not, like perfectly happy with everything that YouTube does you know I feel like they should be more open and allow allow content creators to be more open with their thoughts but um, I can only be grateful that that there is this platform to where I can do what I'm doing that I can connect with you guys um, run the Book of Mormon sharing challenge that's because of YouTube it's because of many people and many different things but we can't forget YouTube so uh, Kizikrim, <laughs> or Kizikrim says, it's interesting that you're, that you're talking about aliens and Bigfoot when the theme for this, uh, Splatfest in Splatoon 3 is taking place this weekend. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but that sounds fun. I'm assuming that's like a game or something. Um, Green Tree, yeah, not, I'm not... Okay, yeah, I'm not everything he says right. Or not everything is right. Yeah, but I mean, you know, who who is perfectly right? I, I don't think that I'm perfectly right. I don't think anybody is. We're all just trying to do the best that we can. Um, and we have to just, like, remain... That's a weird license plate. It's like a French flag, Costa Rica flag. I don't know what that other one is whatever um <clears throat> i think we all just have to like remain very flexible because no matter how sound in a, an idea or a theory is like i said before i don't think any of us are very good as, as as a species i don't think that we're good at predicting the future we can kind of do it sometimes we we do it where it matters but if we could predict the future <clears throat> you would still, you know, you wouldn't have businesses go out of business like uh, uh, Sears, for example. At one time, Sears was huge. They dominated, <coughs> they dominated the the retail department store space. You know, it was Sears, but with, with all their assets and all their ability to try and predict the future, they weren't able to to save themselves. And that's been the case with so many other companies, organizations, even countries. 
so it's just like no one really knows <laughs> no one i always like think it's funny when someone talks about the future whether it's in the church or whether it's like something outside the church and they talk with like such certainty it's like you don't know nobody knows and it's the same with the past unless you actually go back in the past you don't really know you may have evidence of what happened in the past but like you know for example <clears throat> here we are trying to understand the deeper things of uh, the church and the gospel and life if you were to like go a thousand years from now like just pretending like uh society kept progressing like it does and a thousand years later if we're not able to do it ourselves being members of the church like we're trying to get at the the center of these secrets a uh, people people a thousand years from now archaeologists and academics sure as heck are not going to get to the bottom of it you know so when we look in the past and we're trying to figure out what people believed and the meaning of like different religions philosophies it, it's just it's basically impossible you can kind of get an idea maybe some of like the basic elements but like all the minutia uh, it's just like it's not possible <clears throat> um you know it, with the scriptures for example you know there's going to be people that say that no everything was translated correctly from the hebrew from the greek whatever but <clears throat> the question that i have and this is something that i have to i want to research but the question that i have is <clears throat> where in the world is the original book of genesis exodus leviticus where is the original the first time that it was put on papyrus or, or paper or whatever where is it that's the only way that you can be sure that things have remained the same you can go back and be like well you know this is our oldest existing copy and but unless you can actually show me the the very first original you can't really make that claim because you have no idea what's happened between the time of the very first original to the oldest copy that we have there was a story um <coughs> dang it where was it well if you look it up right now the oldest copy of um the the old testament i believe is up for sale it's like uh there's an auction taking place and what i want to see is the very first original and how things have changed from that to that there there definitely have been changes and there's no way that any of us can know about it unless we find those very first originals you know okay uh kai's Krim, splatoon 3 is a video game on nintendo switch watching the show known as mountain monsters whether real or fake sure was tempting to be convinced of bigfoot in all cryptids well, it's cool. We have a Nintendo Switch. I don't think we have as much fun with it as you do, though. We only have a couple games. <clears throat> Family Reese. Oh, do we got to go? I don't know. I don't know what time it is. Oh, we should. Yeah, we should probably go. Yeah, let me just finish up these comments. Family Reese. But there are no angels who minister to this earth, but those who do belong or have belonged to it. Yes, that's true. But that is just talking about our earth. Uh, that doesn't necessarily nullify that other quote. It could be that angels from our earth minister to other earths, but I, I don't know. Who the heck knows? Open the trunk for her. Okay, uh, Jocelyn, I definitely wouldn't have, have predicted what we have been going through. I thought the members of the church would have been able to handle it all a bit better given all the resources, revelations, slash warnings. Yep. And there's a big lesson in that. Since we are so crappy at figuring out the future, whether it's for the world or for your own personal life, the best thing that we can all do is just follow the prophet and then in our personal lives, uh, pray and receive personal revelation. Because like I've said many times, the way that my life has turned out, which I'm very happy with, I'm very happy with where we're at right now, I could not have planned it. <clears throat> I could not have planned all the steps to get to, to this place. It was all purely by following uh, promptings because only God <laughs> can yield such amazing results. 
Um, that's all it comes down to. <laughs> it just comes down to he who is above all time and can see the beginning from the end. So, all right, guys, I got to take off. So thanks for joining me again. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'm planning on doing a video later today. It's probably going to be the next chapter or two chapters of the book of Revelation. And I'll talk to you guys later.